So if everything goes right, you should be seeing an empty screen right now, my screen actually. So the use case I'm going to demonstrate now is uh, COVID related. Everyone is of course aware of the current pandemic. And um, what you are seeing on screen now is a structure of a protein uh, from the virus, the one that you see in a kind of uh, violet, light violet uh, color. Uh, that's a domain of, uh, of the virus, do uh, a domain of a large protein of the virus, the protein that you all know if you know the picture of the virus, that, like the spikes that are on the outside of the virus. Now the way the virus penetrates our cell is to interact with a receptor, which is another protein, which is sitting on our cell. And the green ribbon representation that you show, that you see here, is actually the receptor on a human cell. So this is the first step in the infection process by the virus. So now we could think of a strategy to, to combat the virus, to compete with the receptor. So for example, see if I was to extract a small substructure from our receptor, in this case an, an helix, and I could try to design a peptide that will bind stronger to the virus than our own receptors. So if you could use such a peptide, it will compete with, the, with our own receptors and prevent the entry. So, so we are now in a field of say protein engineering, which is relevant to, for COVID of course, but it's also used in, in all kinds of our life science application. So one way will be, for example, and you see now a yellow uh, part appearing to do a mutation in this peptide, uh, replacing an amino acid. And now the question is, is this a good choice? Is this a smart mutation? Will it lead to better binding of the peptide to this uh, viral protein? Now that's a question that we can try to answer with our, one of our tools, uh, ad hoc in particular, uh, which is uh, a tool we have been developing in Utrecht for almost 20 years by now, and which has been offered uh, as a web portal to our users using the uh, EOSC infrastructure for more than 10 years. So I'm going to demonstrate to you how uh, this could be done. So now I'm, I'm switching, and so I'm a, say, user. I've heard about EOSC as a, as a tool or European infrastructure. So I'm going to search for EOSC, and I've heard about Haddock as well. Now, uh, you see the first page, and the first page have all to do with EOSC and Haddock, so that's good, so we are well visible. And actually the first link in this page points me to the EOSC marketplace and Haddock. So let's go there. And I'm getting this page which uh, tells me, okay, I'm on the European Open Science Cloud, uh, processing analysis as a service and Haddock for the integrative modeling of biomolecular complexes. So let's, well, agree to get rid of this and now I'm accessing the service. This brings me to a, like an intermediate step. There is no need here in principle for, uh, for applying for the service directly from the OSC, but users will have to, to register first uh, to be able to use our services. So let's go to the service. This brings me, I got it, to the Haddock portal. And what you are seeing here is the Haddock portal version 2.2. Now for the sake of uh, this demonstration, I want to present you a brand new portal, which is the Haddock 2.4 portal, which if everything is correct. So this is the entry point in Utrecht for the thematic services, the EOSC WNMR thematic services in my laboratory. Uh, so now I'm going to scroll and we see that uh, we have actually quite a number of services that are operating uh, from Utrecht and the one that we are interested in is Haddock. Now, before being able to do any submission to these portals, I need to, to be registered, which I am, of course, but I need to log in into the portal. I click on the login window and you see another component of the EOSC infrastructure, which is the single sign-on component, the EGI check-in. So now I'm going to connect to the portal. And the goal here is to use my university credentials to do that. So I'm working at Utrecht and Utrecht University is here. So this is bringing me to my university uh, logging page. No typos, fantastic. 
So it's connect me to the EGI check-in. Yes, continue, I'm fine. And if everything goes right, the portal now tells me you have been successfully logged in, good. So now I can go to the ad hoc portal and start trying to answer this question, was the change I make in this peptide good or not? So we're going to submit a new job. By the way, you see here also BioExcel uh, showing up. So ad hoc is a core software in the BioExcel Center of Excellence uh, project. So let's submit a new job. And you will see that in these steps, there's quite a lot of parameters that a user can, uh, can change. So this is EOSC demo. I have two molecules. I'm going to submit it. So I need to upload a file, which could come from a database, but in this case, it's my design peptide. And I want to use chain A from that one. So this was the, the peptide from the human receptor. So now I'm going to give it the viral protein, which is chain B. Next. So the data have been already validated. Uh, the portal presents me with a number of options. Nothing needs to be changed for this particular use case in this case. And now I'm getting into another page which offers a lot of options and parameters. And I'm going to change them for a uh, for the use case that we want to do. So we don't want to model from scratch the entire interactions. We just want to basically refine this new uh, mutated complex and define if this is a good uh, solution or not. Uh, you see a lot of menus that are clickable that expose all kinds of parameters. So while I'm changing the parameters to something which is sensible, I could probably do anything uh, because there might not be many experts that are understanding what I'm doing. Um, but what you see, another component of basically running thematic services is that you need to provide training to your users. Users are not going to use the resource uh, without a proper training. So that's also a, a lot of investment in time, in effort. Uh, you, you need people to do that. You need to put tutorials online so that people do the right things. And you also need to be ready to answer a lot of questions. So everything is ready. I can submit my computation to the portal. And now since the beginning of April, we have added options to tag our jobs as being COVID related uh, research. So this pop-up window appears. Is this a COVID related uh, research? Yes. And now the job is being su submitted. So you see it has been pro successfully processed and at some point it's going to start running on the grid. Now this COVID tagging that we added uh, in, in the last months basically allows us uh, on the back end to send the jobs to sites, resources that are specifically supporting COVID related research. Uh, so with, uh, with the so negotiation between EOSC and EGI, we gain access uh, since a month now to the US Open Science Grid resources. And we have several high energy physics groups that are physics sites that are providing, that are providing resource for this kind of COVID research. So now we don't need to wait for, for this job to finish because it will take some time. So these are not question of seconds, but I have some pre-calculated results we can go to. So I'm going to the job information. So this is the one I just submitted. And here we see a previous run. And this is bringing you to the uh, result page, what the user, what the end user will be presented with. Now, users also get notified by email. So it's, it's a very user-friendly way of, of dealing with uh, complex workflow, complex computations, which completely hide the complexity of high throughput computing uh, to the end user. So the user can look at, uh, at these results. We have some uh, uh, citations, or proper citation of the European projects and uh, sites that are supporting us. Uh, we constantly monitor the satisfaction of your users. And then you are presented with results, uh, statistics. Uh, in this case, you see here a score. And this score would have been to, would need to be compared with the score of the wild type protein, the unmutated one. And actually, I, I'm not going to show you the comparison, but this is better than the, the receptor in our cells. So yes, we have improved the peptide and maybe we can do more mutations. Uh, this is of course all in silico predictions. We need to do experiments to validate those things. Another feature of the portal, we can look at the structure directly online from the web browser. You can see, here, this particular residue, of course, when I move my mouse, 
connection might be a bit slow, but this is the mutation that we introduce and yet it's there. So now I mentioned uh, in my introduction that we have a, a large uh, user community. So I'm going to bring you to a statistic page, which is online so everyone can look at it. So these are the number of, uh, of user requests that are actually active on our portal. So we have two entry points. So you see there's about 120 that are actually active. There's a large number which is queued. You can find here the total number of jobs that have been served on the portal since the portal have been running in 2008. So it's more than 270,000. And each job submitted to the portal might translate into 1,000 high throughput job being sent to the EOSC high throughput resources. You can also see here that we are monitoring COVID related research since, uh, uh, since a month now. And we can also have a look at uh, the worldwide distribution of our users. So you see uh, a map, uh, let's sort the users. So you see the total number of registered users for all of the WNMR thematic services is reaching almost 18,000. We have seen an increasing registration in the last uh, months because of uh, the COVID pandemic. So a lot of people are doing COVID related projects uh, all of together Europe aggregated is the largest community, but you see that uh, Asia is falling very closely and the US as well. Now, finally, I'm going to show you uh, actually real time statistics about jobs that are running now. Actually, this is the statistics from last hour. Uh, so this has been running on the, on the EOSC resources. So we have about uh, say more than 2000 jobs. And in this case it's about one third of the jobs that are run running for the last hours were COVID related one. Where have those jobs been running? This is the distribution again over the last hour over sites. Uh, so half of them have run actually at uh, in Karlsruhe, which is good in the context of the EOSC uh, week. We don't predefine where jobs are running, so we are using more an opportunistic computing model, but Dirac for EGI does all the magic for us and distributes where there are resources. So currently, Kit is giving us a lot of resource uh, this is specific also for COVID related research, like the, uh, the high energy physics sites in Marseille, which, which put up resource specifically for COVID, but you also see the Dutch resource very importantly represented there. And finally, the last bit uh, I want to show you. So this is uh, the number of jobs that have been running on the infrastructure for the last 30 days. Uh, the violet color that you see there is related to COVID research. So these are all jobs that have been tagged as COVID over the last months, and this represents a significant uh, fraction of the jobs. So with that, um, I want to conclude this demo, and I hope that I gave you a real life example of uh, what uh, the server, uh, the thematic services can, can mean for users for also a real life uh, important research question re related to COVID pandemic. Thank you very much.